Bro, that's a good one. Oh, sick. Woo! Gorgeous. Welcome back to Fly Shop Tour. Over the next two weeks, we're gonna be traveling south through Florida, highlighting some local fly shops, hitting some local fisheries, and of course, having some key lime pie along the way. Our first stop's in Jacksonville, Florida, where we're gonna to try to get into some redfish. We'll see you on the road. Gonna come to your town, gonna find your corner, and we'll soon be knocking on your door. I was Florida man for this for this trip. <laughs> um, <laughs> we were stopping at our first fly shop, which was Strike Zone, and they actually have a connected conventional shop, which is massive and dialed. Hey man, how's it going? What's up, Colin? Yeah, nice to meet you. Dude, good to meet you. This place is uh, bigger than I expected. Oh yeah, let's take a quick look around. Yeah, let's do it. Cool. So is this entire shop fly fishing? Mm -hmm. Full service fly shop. We specialize in everything from the Seychelles to Alaska. We got you covered. Do you work with local tires at all? Yeah, we work with a few local guys that tie a bunch of flies for us. Tony Janix, myself, we do a bunch of custom local patterns just specifically for the area. Shrimp, crab, bait fish, all three things redfish eat. I feel like that's so important with any fly shop is to have guys who are out on the water trying out different flies on a daily basis and being able to give that kind of knowledge to people coming into your stores. For sure, getting flies to dial in the specific area is awesome and having guys that tie those specific flies is ideal. Yeah, sure. I mean this place is massive so why don't you uh, show us some of the other special stuff you guys sure. got here. Come on. We got plenty of fly lines and just about every leader you need to be dangerous. We have an awesome little selection of a bunch of different fly tying materials, which is probably gonna get picked through tonight with fly tying night we got going oh, on. Oh, you have a fly tying night going on? We do, yeah. We got it back in the bar and it's a it's a cool little get together for a bunch there's of a, guys. There's a bar? There's a bar. Okay. Let's go check it out. <laughs> hey man, how's it going? What's going on? Hi, Andrew. Jared. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Yeah, welcome to the uh, in-shop bar. Have a seat. Any fly shop that has a bar and it's a winner in my book. Absolutely, yeah. We, we love this area. We use it for a bunch of different things. Like tonight we have fly tying night. We might have to stop by tonight. Please do. Yeah, absolutely. You want a beer now? I think we should probably crack one. Absolutely. Let me grab you one. All right, thanks for coming by the shop. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. I just came by for the beers, really, so. Yeah, that's all right. Good excuse. Can you tell us a little bit about the community, the fly fishing community here in Jacksonville? Yeah, it's awesome. I, you know, I've been here a long time. When it was Black Fly, transitioned over to Strike Zone. What's cool is that we've seen the community grow. We've seen more and more people get into the sport. And uh, what's nice is that Colin and I were able to contribute to that, teaching a lot of people how to cast. We have a way of teaching them to kind of get into the sport without being intimidated at all. Yeah. Andrew, we've been asking everybody along the way, what does a fly shop mean to you? What a fly shop means to me is basically trying to get as many new people that might be intimidated to get into the sport and realize that with Colin and I's help, that we can get you into the sport and get you into the community. Awesome guys, thank you so much. Uh, I know you're one of the top Costa dealers in the country. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, you definitely need to check out our uh, Costa selection. We're, we're very proud of it. We'll go, we'll go check it out. I think tomorrow we might be stopping by their headquarters down in Jupiter. Cool. Um, but thank you guys so much for an awesome shop visit. Thanks for coming and checking us out, man. We appreciate it. Yeah, we might see you at the fly tying night. Later. Please do. Yeah, we'll have beer and pizza. All right, beer and pizza. I'm Absolutely. In. All right, All right thank cheers. you guys. So the next morning we met up with Captain Scott Owens. He is a OG guide in that area. Morning, Jared. Good morning, how are you? Good, man. Excited Good to, to fish you. with yeah, you. Yeah, man, yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. We're, we're gonna do some shallow water fly fishing for some redfish. Our fishery here, it, it's seen its ups and its downs, few fish around. It's not necessarily where it used to be, long way from there, but we're working to try to get it back there. Georgia's regulations are about to be the highest in the country on creel limits uh, once Louisiana goes through with their creel limit reduction. So uh, we've been supporting those guys over there. I hope that they'll uh, reach out when it's time again to help us out because we're going to need it. But uh, now we're going to go get some reds. So let's get out of here and go fishing, guys. So yeah, we got on the water and, you know, Scott has his game plan and takes us to the first spot. And 
we push into this back little lagoon area. Well, just past him, foot past him, foot in front of him, strip a couple times. Small tick ticks, you know, he'll eat it. There's definitely something coming out of this pocket in front of us up here though. Go ahead. As soon as it hits the water, just start stripping though. Start stripping that. First cast of the day, send it out, hook up on a redfish. There he is, nice work. <laughs> First cast of the day. Yep, we're done, because that, that, you know, you know, oh, nice fish too. You know what they say about the first cast. What do they say about first cast of the day? Yeah, you don't want to do that normally is what they say. <laughs> Gorgeous fish, man. Good job. Boy, he inhaled it. Look at that, dude. That's when you know you're out with a legend when you put one cast in and you hook up. Doesn't happen to you all the time? <laughs> Sorry about that. I was going to try to hold him a little longer. But... All right, let's catch another one. Fish a little bit longer. He's on it. There you go. I caught one more fish kind of in that morning session. Nice. Two casts, two fish, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you can't beat that. No, it reminds you what, what's worth protecting out here. Absolutely, man. I love uh, Louisiana's, you know, we stand so they can tail. Pretty, pretty solid quote. Whoever came up with that, good job. And then it, it got hard. Ah, you, you lined him. Oh, uh, he did he spook? Yeah, he just went by us. Another big fish. This is where I'd tell somebody, oh, you wanted to catch him? Thought we were just out here to look at him. <laughs> For five hours, we casted and, and caught nothing. And he was kind of like, all right, let's push into this one canal that um, went up into this marsh. They could be anywhere in here. And I mean, I follow them all the way up around this corner. It'll open up and then there's like a little hole and they'll be on the shells. And then there's a straightaway that's super shallow with a bunch of shell. And I see him go over the top of that and continue to go on incoming, but I can't get over the top of it because it's too shallow most of the time. Here's one here on top of the shells. He just floated up over it. He's just right of you. Heart's beating fast. I'm like, I'm gonna screw up this cast. Yeah, go. Come left with your forward cast left, right there. Just ease it out of there, ease it, yep. Strip it, he's right there, I see him. He's looking at it, not so hard though. He ate it, he ate it. Nice work. The fish spins around, slurps it, takes it. That was pretty cool. Keep it up high now. That's all shell down there. It's a good fish. Yep. Some big ones in here. One of the coolest redfish eats and experiences I've ever had. It's a good fish, isn't it? Yeah. It's definitely pulling harder than the last ones. Well, they, they do eat if you put a, the right cast in. Yeah, you gotta hang a bush first. It's called a Chuckalusky outrigger. The Chuckalusky outrigger. Oh man, what a stud. Dude, sick. Nice. <laughs> Sweet. Big old fat fish too. Yeah. I love the blue in the tail. Oh yeah. What do you say we let him back and see if we can get one more? Yeah, let's do it. Thanks for showing us your backyard here. Oh yeah. Side yard, backyard, front yard. <laughs> yard we love. Rather be here than on land. Oh yeah. Scott, thank you so much for an awesome day on the water. I thought it was gonna be all downhill after we caught a fish on the first cast. It normally is. But it ended up being an awesome day. Absolutely. Three redfish to the boat. This place is definitely worth protecting. 100%. If any of you guys make it down to this area, please hit up Scott with South, Southeastern Angling. Yep. Hit up his guides, hit up the local fly shops, support the community. That was a pretty epic finish to our first day fishing out there with Scott. We continue further south and we had a chance to go visit our boy Joe Gugino at the Costa headquarters in Jupiter. Yo, what what's up? up Joey G? What's up? How Thanks. are you? Good, how you doing? We're driving down the coast, figured we'd have to stop in and say what's up to the guys at Coast Up. Yeah, welcome to the office, glad to have you. Yeah, I've been dying to get my hands on the new King Tides. These babies right here? You think you have something you could show us? We got two to show you. We got King Tide 6 and we got King Tide 8. All right, take a look, check them out. What makes them so special? So this is over five years of production, five years of innovation put into one pair of shades. So we have the King Tide 6 right there you're trying on right now. We have King Tide 8 as well in here. I've never seen a pair of 
fishing sunglasses have this much craftsmanship on them. Year over year, our product team take innovation to the next level. And this one at iCast is your best eyewear, which we are super proud of. Well, this isn't the only reason we love Costa for yeah. the innovation, but also how you guys support local communities, conservation groups. Do you think we could dive into that a little bit? Yeah, let's do it. Every time I put on a pair of Costas, not only are they an amazing product, but I think about how much you guys do to protect the waters way more than any other brand out there. So talk to me about One Coast, what's that? Yeah, so One Coast started in 2017 uh, when the Keys were hit after Hurricane Irma, and it is basically to help restore those coastal communities. Talk to me about the Five Rivers program. It's something that I was personally involved in when I was up going up through college yeah. and people watching this, reach out to your local Trout Unlimited chapters uh, and get involved with Five Rivers, but yep. why don't you tell me a little bit about what that is? Yeah, it's a great question. So, uh, partner with Trout Unlimited, um, we have TU Coast of Five Rivers, so it's a network of college fishing clubs across the country. Over almost 100 different clubs, over 2,500 students across the country that are Coast ambassadors on their campus, they run events, they run meetups, they work with TU, and uh, Coast supports them in their opportunity to grow fishing communities and fishing clubs around conservation on their campus. Love it. Last thing, I know there's a million things you guys are doing. The last thing that I wanted to touch on, uh, I've been seeing it on your social, I've been seeing it on YouTube. Talk talk about these incredible marlins that you guys are hatching and tagging. So we went to uh, Mag Bay with Los Locos, great operation there. Partners, IGFA, uh, TBF, the Billfish Foundation. We went to deploy 15 satellite tags and strike marlin, all on the fly, all on pangas with our Costa pros and Costa team members. It was awesome. Did you catch one? I did catch one. Love it, dude. Uh, is there a place people can get like more info about what Coast is doing? For sure, yeah. So this is our uh, first edition of the Protect Report. We're actually publishing this month our next edition of the Protect Report. So we have a QR code that will show links online. And it really brings it again, all coasted together, just like the mangroves and the Everglades, how it's the base of life. That's what is the base for Costa and what we do. Love it. Well, guys, I think we're wrapped up here. Next time you put on a pair of sunglasses, not only think about how they're helping you see fish better, but think about how they're helping protect those fish. We wrapped up at Costa <laughs> and I wanted to hit my first key lime pie stop of the trip, the old key lime house. I can't guarantee you a hundred pound tarpon, but we're definitely gonna be trying some delicious key lime pie and this will be our first stop. That's, that's a bite right there. This, this is the real deal. This is probably a 4.75 out of 5 right here. Everybody looks at me and they go, what kind of rating is that? And I'm like, ah, you know, I don't know. Just go with the flow. You know, <laughs> Dave Portnight does his uh, pizza ratings out of 10. I'm going to do my key lime pie ratings out of 5. I would never say that. I don't want to be the Dave Portnoy of anything. I apologize in advance for the horrible key lime pie rankings. All of my numbers got like squished together <laughs> right around like four point something and five. Uh, I should have done it out of 10. So we're uh, we're down to the very end of the key lime pie. We want to maybe have some locals give it a taste test. I think they like it. We are on a local beach here in South Florida. It's our day off, so we decided to kind of walk down the beach. We've been seeing some big sharks. We've been casting some small bait fish patterns into the sharks and pulling some nice jacks off of them. So let's see if we can try to get one on film. Got to pick up your one piece of trash a day. Ziploc. How long do you think it takes for this to decompose? Um, I'm like running the beach like we're rooster fishing in Baja, Mexico, looking for these big shark, and I'm throwing, you know, backhand casts, 40, 50, 60 feet, 70 feet, I don't know if I can cast that far, um, <laughs> in front of the shark and stripping as fast as I can back. Let's go. <laughs> so cool. And we're catching these little jack, but Ew. like Still badass. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the size that matters. It's how hard it was to catch him. You guys were probably expecting that fish to come out and be like this huge jack, but still pretty rewarding. And what's cool is this is DIY fishing on a beach in a random Airbnb on the Florida coast. And it's a good example that come you can Papa. get it done anyway. Come to Papa. Uh, oh, let's go. <laughs> Little DIY tug right here. Nice. In the mouth. It's insane how hard this little fish pulls. 
Go get huge so somebody in the Keys can go catch a massive jack. So the next morning we were headed to Boca, Florida. Nice. Maca Rattan. <laughs> What's going on? Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. Jared. Hey, Jared. Darren Selznick. Nice, nice to, to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, welcome to Florida and uh, let me take you on a little quick tour of the shop. We'd love that. Great. This is Old Florida Fly Shop. We've been here servicing South Florida for 25 years and I've owned it for last 20 years. Amazing. I feel like when people think Boca Raton, Florida, they don't think fly fishing capital of, of the world. Totally. So are they wrong or? Uh, fly fishing capital of the world, I wouldn't go <laughs> to say, but certainly our fly fishing capital for those of us who live here. And cool. It's such a good jumping off point for so many different areas. And then the local fishing is really, really good. Well, you got a beautiful shop here. Do you mind man. showing us around yeah. a little bit? Let's start over here. You know, this this side we built out later in life of the store. Full clothing side. You know, we carry Sims, all the tropical stuff. Shirts, pants, all the stuff to keep you cool in the hot weather. One of our, you know, our big things here is we are a technical fly tying shop. Technical fly fishing, and that includes fly tying. So, you know, anytime we have unique flies like this, we try to put together videos and kits, and that way it makes it easier for the consumer just to have a look at that fly. If they want to buy it, fantastic. We're here for them. If they want to tie it, fantastic. We're here for them. So, you know. What if they just want to look at it? Fantastic, have a look, <laughs> get some ideas. That's that's how we all get ideas for Love fly it. tying, Love is looking on, looking on all the websites and looking yeah. at everybody else's flies and taking those good ideas from one person's flies and incorporating it into ours. Cool. All right, let's uh, keep looking at the shop. Yeah. I'd love for you to show yep. us a few other. Uh, yeah. I'm seeing a, a, a huge, fly tying assortment. Yeah. So I'm assuming you guys can get very detailed in Correct. the type of flies that yeah. you're feeding Yeah, so our fly tying section has really grown over the last 20, 15, 10, five years even. A lot of interest since COVID in fly tying. It's one of those things you gotta have everything to be able to have when somebody just walks in and is looking for obscure oddball stuff. Like what, give me something Oh, a lot of the trout stuff got. is always something. When people come to South Florida and are looking for partridge hen or you know or dry fly hackle yeah very few places to find it if any besides us so you know question we've been asking fly shop owners as we're traveling mm -hmm. through the southeast what does it mean to own a fly shop for you hmm. it's my life it's for me personally it's my passion you know i've been fly fishing like i said for close almost four years and you know i have a business background and it kind of has evolved into this whole thing called Old Florida Fly Shop. Uh, I love passing on good information. I'm a crazy fly tire, so for me, you know, sharing the, the knowledge of fly tying and passing that on is great. Down here, the socializing is done in the store because we're fishing all year round. There's no downtime. So the fact that Old Florida is a center hub of some of that activity is pretty cool. Love it. All right, man. Fantastic. We gotta go catch some fish. Yeah, let's do that. All right, awesome. See you soon. Thanks so much. Later that afternoon, we got to go fish right outside of Miami, doing some saltwater fishing. I'm Michael Pasalacqua. I work at Old Florida Fly Shop. I'm one of their guides, and we're gonna try to catch bonefish or permit. We're uh, gonna go try to catch a, either a largemouth or a smallmouth bass. Yeah. Let's get it. Let's do it. See that mangrove shoot? Is this one up here? There's something up there. Right before it to the left. Yeah, if you really think you see a fish, let it fly. There is one to the right of the shoot. Cast right of the shoot. Other side. Pick it up and go right. Pick it up, go right. Perfect. Uh, maybe three feet to the left. Go ahead and just start stripping that in. Bump, bump. See him? Moving left now. Moving behind the shoot. In between. See him? There's a couple in here. Left side, yeah. Where? Right Pick here? up, go again, left. Left long. I see him. Yeah, that's fine. It's perfect. There's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve fish. Oh, there we go. 
at a boy. Nice, dude. Keep that rod tip really high and watch those mangrove shoots. Let's go. Watch those mangrove shoots. Keep the rod tip really high. Don't worry about getting him on the reel, just strip. He will take line. Don't worry about getting him on the reel. Keep that rod tip really high. Nice, good job, dude. Pretty work. You got that net? I could probably net him too. We grinded pretty hard that day and ended up catching one pretty small to average sized bonefish. See you, buddy. Pretty cool fish right there. Heck yeah, man. Good job. <laughs> it was a super solid day. Any day you or being pulled around a, a skiff was pretty amazing, and we caught a bonefish that was successful. We spend the night in Pompano area, wake up early the next morning to go visit the legendary Chittum factory. We are continuing our journey south. We're here at Chittum Skiffs. We heard a rumor they might have a couple boats inside. Let's go see how they're made. What's up, George? Hey, Jared. How's it going, man? Pretty good to meet you. Pretty good. This is a pretty incredible facility you have here. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it took us a, a while to get uh, grow up this big, but here we are. And All right. So how about a tour? Let's do it. All right, come on. George, could you give us a 30 second high level view on how these boats are made? So right here, all the parts get made. Gel coat gets sprayed in to the mold, rolls over into the lamination side. Once yeah. it gets laminated, the parts come out and we go over into the assembly area. Okay. You want to head over? Yeah, let's check out the assembly area. You could be on the flat or you could be out in the ocean. I've taken uh, one of our skips, skiffs to the Bahamas and back. So you can see it's a pretty light hull. This will, will take a 70 horsepower motor. That's crazy. Are these, are these known as the fastest skiffs I, I'm, on the market? I'm pretty or? sure nobody beats any of our guys out there on the water. Okay. Horsepower to horsepower. Yeah, I know Brandon so. says how important some of those tournaments are when they yeah, need to yeah. go run out to a spot. Uh, our fastest of skiffs, uh, one's an 18 that goes 84, and another one's a 21 that goes 84. Holy we man. haven't beat the 84 mile an hour <laughs> mark yet, but it, it's coming. We'll, we'll get it. We're in the assembly process right now. Walk us through kind of the last few steps here. Here we have hulls and decks and liners. They all come together here. We glue the, uh, the liner once it's bonded in. We come in and we tab, we tab in the, the joint. In this day and age to have an entire manufacturing line all based here in the U.S. and, and to be employing over 40 people here and giving them opportunities, is that a rewarding feeling for you? It's rewarding, but sometimes it can be a little stressful. Yeah. So, but, you know, at the end of the day, when you have your, your clients come in and tell you how much fun they had on the skiff and how many fish they caught, how many tournaments they won. And it, uh, you just get back to it and, yeah. and say, all right, well, let's, let's, let's keep going in that direction and hope nobody gets in front of us. That's amazing. So. George, tell me about what makes these boats different from your competitors. Well, uh, one of the main factors is, that, is the boat's lighter. And, and that allows you to have a lighter engine on it, uh, carry less fuel. Our hull design, is is different from the other manufacturers along with our spray rail our spray rail is is much more effective where it's it's just not a flat yeah. it's actually a pocket that you can reach up inside and, and instead of having the water hit that flat and, and blowing off where the wind's just going to blow it on back onto you it gets caught up inside of it and helps it then disperse towards the, the aft yeah. end of the boat this model being a challenger our our lightest uh and Simplest, most simplistic boat of, of our lineup. Still a very substantial boat, whether it has a tiller or a side console. The fishability of this boat and the stability to have, you know, two large people or three large people on it is, is pretty groundbreaking compared to a lot of the other tiller boats that are out there yeah. on well, the market. Well, we've been having a blast on ours. This is an incredible operation. You guys are, are making some stunning boats that not only look beautiful, but are the highest performing boats on the market right now. So thanks so much for showing us around. Thanks for taking our boat around and, 
and uh, giving us feedback on yeah. it and great pictures and yeah. video. And thanks for coming and letting us share it with you. Thanks so much, thanks. George. Just wrapping up at the Chittim factory here. If you guys want to know anything else about Chittim or our Challenger 18, check the link below. We're excited to be heading down south to some new water. We're going to be splashing our Chittim and uh, let's make it happen. See you guys on the road. Incredible day at the factory there. And then on our journey down to the Keys, we were like, we have to do some peacock bass fishing. We're in Miami looking for the legendary peacock bass. Not Brazil, not Colombia, Miami. South Florida, the only other place in the world where you can actually find these exotic fish. They were introduced by the Florida Game Commission back in 1984, I believe. And they've taken over the waterways here. We're in a neighborhood pond. Maybe we could try to catch a couple. First fish of the day right here. Beautiful peacock. Caught one fish pretty quickly right off the bat. And then we're like hiking around this pond with a bunch of houses behind us. <laughs> and it was pretty slow. I got some seaweed for you. Where are the peacocks? And it was crazy. Like the second the sun came up, it just started going off. So cue the epic peacock segment. Boom. <laughs> Bro, that's a good one. Oh, sick. Woo. Gorgeous. Check out the stunning colors on this peacock. Just super, super bright oranges. You could tell these fish were born in the Amazon jungle and we're lucky enough to uh, get to see a few here in uh, South Florida. Thank you, buddy. Let's go. Oh my God. Sick. Well guys, you don't always need a thousand dollar fishing guide. Sometimes a little DIY adventure in the backyard is all you need. Stunning peacock bass, absolutely explosive. Thanks buddy. <laughs> and I think I stood in one spot for maybe 15, 20 minutes and I probably reeled in 10 peacocks in, in that one spot. And then we headed to our Airbnb in Big Pine Key. Suddenly high waves, frequent lightning, and heavy downpours. Tropical storm, tornado winds. Oh. In the Florida Keys, I'm like, this is horrible. 